Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and we have the rankings predictions now for the 2023 season. We do it every single year. You can go look back at last year's predictions and see how close I guess I was to getting the top 10. We're going to start with the WTA because probably the hardest one to do out of the bunch. I'm going to start with number 10 on the list. So coming in at number 10, I put Paola Badosa, who did have a disappointing season in 2022. She dropped outside the top 10 after a couple of bad results, but she does have points to gain in places like Cincinnati, Guadalajara, and of course, Wimbledon. Places that I think she can do well at, because she can play on the hard courts as she proved at Indian Wells a few years ago. Points to lose. She was the winner of Sydney last year, so she's going to lose a lot of points there. Indian Wells as well. Semi-final this year. She'll lose those points and the Australian Open, but I really think that she can gain enough points to get back in the top 10 and finish there at the end of the season. But coming in at number 9 now, I've got Belinda Bencic. Now, this is a little bit of a different one. She has been in the top 10 before. She's just outside the top 10 at the moment, but I have a feeling that she is going to put it together next year especially after winning the team competition, the Billie Jean King Cup, I think her confidence is going to be high. She does have points to gain at Indian Wells, Cincinnati, and of course Wimbledon. And she isn't bad on the grass court. So if Wimbledon do reinstate the points, she could really do some damage maybe there. Points to lose though, Charleston, Miami, and Berlin. A lot of points in that part of the world, but I really think that if she can get it together, especially at Wimbledon and in the US Open Series, she can possibly get inside the top 10 and finish at number nine. Coming at number eight now, and I've got Maria Sakkari, who is around this point at the moment. I think she might drop down a little bit more than this year. She has points again in Miami, Stuttgart, and Wimbledon, but the biggest one of the points that she's going to lose at the WTA final, she made the semi-final there, of course. Indian Wells final, which is going to be hard to back up, and Guadalajara final as well. So I'm a little bit concerned that she's going to drop those points. Now, she does have points to make it slams, of course, but I'm just a little worried that she's going to lose the points, especially those WTA finals points at the end of the season. Coming in at number seven now is Coco Goff. So I've got her drop down as well. She's been as high as number three in the world this year. She does have a lot of points to gain, though, at some big events. The Australian Open, she only made the first round this year. Cincinnati as well, and of course, Wimbledon. So massive points to gain at some big tournaments, but it's the points to lose that I'm worried about. She's got the French Open final that she's got to defend. She's got the US Open quarterfinals and the WTA finals. Even though she didn't win a match, she's still got points for being there, but it's going to be a matter of if she can play well early in the year, Australian Open, and try and hold on to as many French Open points as she can, then she might be able to maintain her ranking in the 2023 season. Coming in at number six is Alina Rabakina. Now, she should have already probably been at number six in the world at some point this year because of that Wimbledon win. But of course, it wasn't worth anything. But the way she's played to finish off the year, I feel like she could really step up next year. She has points to gain in Canada. The US Open, she lost in the first round. Of course, Wimbledon was worth no points, even though she won it. So she's really playing Wimbledon again as a defending champion for free. And if she can replicate any sort of Wimbledon form again, she could really do some damage in the rankings. And the only points that she has to lose really Adelaide final, Indian Wells, and Cincinnati quarterfinals. So not too many points to lose going into next season. And of course, like I said, Wimbledon, she basically played that for free. US Open, maybe she can do some damage there at the end of the season and really push up the rankings this time next year. Coming in number five now, and I've got Jessica Bagula now. She's been very consistent this year, and I expect her to continue to be consistent, but I do expect her to drop down a little bit in the rankings because of some of the players that are ahead of her. I think might just push her down a little bit. She's got points to gain in Dubai, Indian Wells, and of course, Wimbledon. So some big points there that she could make up next season, but she does have a lot of big points to lose, like Guadalajara final. She won that tournament, of course. She won a lot of points there. She made the final of Madrid, a lot of points there, and she also made the quarterfinals of the Australian Open. So unless she makes a semi-final of a slam or better, or wins another 1,000 tournament, I just don't know if she's going to be able to maintain those points. So I think she's going to drop down a little bit, but she's super consistent, so I'll keep her in the top five. Coming in at number four now, and I've got Ons Jabur, who I've got dropping down a little bit in the rankings. She does have a lot of points to gain at the massive tournament, so she didn't even play the Australian Open last year. She made the Wimbledon final. Of course, that wasn't worth any points. In the French Open, she lost in the first round, so she does have a lot of points to make up its slams next year, but she has a lot of points to lose as well. She was the final of the US Open, she won Madrid, and she got to the final of Rome, so a lot of points there to lose. Some of you might have her at number one in the world if she can somehow 
take down Sviantek, but I've got her down at number four. I just don't know if she's going to really be able to maintain the points that she won this year. Of course, she made two finals at Slams. There's always going to be pressure there as a finalist, even though it's worth no points at Wimbledon. I still think she's going to have a little bit of pressure, but let's see if she can maintain that ranking or be in the top four by the end of the season. Coming in number three now, I've got Caroline Garcia now. Very impressed with the second half of her season this year, and I expect that the first half of next season she should be able to maintain that form because she doesn't have that many points to defend until later in the year. Australian Open, no points there. Well, 10 points, but she lost in the first round. Miami also lost in the first round. And Wimbledon made the fourth round, but worth zero points. So I'm expecting her to really play the first half of the season, staying in that top four and adding to her total. But then the second half of the season, things get crazy. She's got the WTA Finals points to defend. She's got the Cincinnati points to defend winning both those tournaments and the US Open semifinals. So going to be a little bit tough if she doesn't really add to her total at the start of the season because the back half of the season, she's going to lose a lot of points. But I think she can. In fact, I think she might even be able to get to a final of a slam next year the way she was playing at points of the season this year. Coming in number two, I've got Arena Sabalenka, who is very similar to Garcia in the points de department. She has points to gain at Indian Wells, Miami, and of course, Wimbledon. And I expect her next year, I think the Russian and Belarusian players will be able to play Wimbledon. So I'm banking off the fact that she'll probably be able to play Wimbledon and possibly get to a final or a semi-final. But the WTA Finals, US Open in Cincinnati, she has a lot of points to defend at the second half of the season. So just like Garcia, she's gonna have to play well early, get a lot of points at the start of the season to account for the massive amount of points that she's going to have to defend at the end of the year. But I think she could be number two by the end of next season. And coming in at number one is Iga Sviantek. I don't know how she's not going to be number one unless she gets injured or just completely loses all confidence. But she dominated everyone this year. It was so hard for anybody to even just get a set of her at points this year. Uh, she's got Madrid, Guadalajara, and Wimbledon, all worth zero points. She didn't play a couple of those events because she was playing so much tennis and winning so much tennis, she didn't have to play some of the big events. So if she plays those events, I expect her to do well there. And the points to lose, of course, French Open, US Open, Indian Wells, three of the massive tournaments in the season. But I think she can back it up at those events and at least save a lot of those points. So I've got Iga Sviantec at number one. It's so hard to pick against her, especially because so many players can barely compete against her in the big events. So there it is. That's my top 10 for next season and we'll revisit this at the end of next year and see how close we got. Let me know down in the comments below, what is your top 10 for the ladies? I think it's super random. I mean, if you look at the points between number two and number 10, there's not that many points actually separating the bunch. Sviantek well, well on top. Uh, but let me know down in the comments below. I want to see what you guys think in the rankings department, who is going to finish on top of the rankings and who is going to finish in the middle.